Hey everybody, Carl Shue from Snorkel.tv here, and I couldn't be more excited to present to you um, our first series of tutorials using GreenSox Loader Max to load a series of images. All right, so the file that I'm going to show you right now is the last file that we will be building today, um, and we're going to progress from ground zero up to here. And what's happening is that four images are loading, and while they load, the total progress of all the images is being tracked, as well as the individual progress of all the child images. So one more time, real quick, you'll see that each child image loads, then shows up, and all along the total is being tracked. But before we can get there, we got to go through some of the basics of loading a single image, and then we'll show you how to track the progress of a single image, and then I'll show you how to load and track the progress of multiple images, and lastly, we'll show you how you can do all that by just chucking a very simple and cleanly formatted XML file at Loader Max. So last week I gave you guys a little bit of a primer post to get you excited about this stuff where I basically highlighted the difference between using Loader Max to load an image and the native AS3 loader. And I gave you a little bit of a background on what Loader Max does and the side-by-side -side comparison of how short and concise the Loader Max code is as opposed to the native AS3 loader code. So that should have gotten you excited, and you really should have done your homework of watching the Rich Shoop Loader Max video series. All right, I'm going to have a little bit of overlap with what Rich discusses um, in my videos, but I really want you to watch his because he excels at giving a very technically precise demonstration of a lot of the Loader Max features and common functions when loading uh, mixed media and you can learn a lot from his series. I on the other hand today I'm gonna go pretty quickly through just some of the general concepts so that you can get up and running very quickly um, building full featured photo galleries. All right, So I really think that Rich's videos and mine are going to complement each other and I really don't need to reinvent the wheel based on what he's already done. So let's switch over to um, Flash and start loading our single image. Towards the end of this video I will run you again through your homework and give you the links that you need to really start at square one with Loader Max. Alright, let's just take a quick look at my file setup and then we'll get on our way. So, in the files that I'll be giving you and that I will be going over today, I have four FLAs that are going to walk us through loading a single image, loading a sim single image and tracking its progress, and then in video number two, I'm going to show you how to load multiple images and then also how to load multiple images by just chucking an XML file at Loader Max. Um, what's important though is that all the images that we'll be using are going to be external to our SWIT and they're going to be stored in an images folder. And we have this very simple bird, crab, lobster, and whale that we'll be loading in. And when it time comes for loading XML, we have an XML file here that has our image loader data. Now, if you've already used the GreenSock tweening platform for using tween light or tween max, you already have in your com folder uh, all the GreenSock classes that you need. Uh, whenever you use tween light or download the latest GreenSock stuff, you always have access to all of this loader max goodness. All right. So let's switch on over to Flash and let's just talk about loading a single image and then tracking that image's progress. And we're going to do this step by step. So in Flash, I have a very simple FLA called load single image. And when I test it, boom, it loads a single image. Surprise. Okay. What I want to show you though is just some of the loader max basics as far as the syntax goes uh, to get just a simple image on your stage. Um, you're going to do a few imports. Uh, you're going to import the loading classes that you need for GreenSock. And quite honestly, if you're not doing any tweening, you probably don't need this guy either. So all you would have to do is load up the loading classes. But it's just, I know I'm going to be tweening. So doing GreenSock dot asterisk loads in all the basic tween light and tween max. And now in addition, we're going to be loading everything inside of the loading package. So, in order to load an image, you create something called an image loader. And in the image loader constructor, you can pass in tons of information about the image you're loading, uh, including the position of that image, the scale of the image, what should happen as that image loads, what should happen when that image fails to load, what should happen when that image completes its load, 
yada, yada, yada. There's tons of different things that can be set inside of here, but for the bare minimum, we just need to tell loader max what image we are loading. That's the most important thing. So that's the first parameter. And here we have the URL of my image in relationship to my Swift file. So inside the images folder, I have crab.png. After we specify what image we want to load, we have a vars object that is very similar to the tween light vars object where we would set the x, y, and scale that we might be tweening an image to. But for image loaders, the vars are going to be things like the container that we're loading our object into, or the initial position of my object, or the on progress event listener that we'll be using. But right now I'm just going to make it very simple and say that the container that we're loading into is this which will refer to the stage or the main timeline or the root level of my Swift. So once we give the image loader just a little bit of information, we tell that image loader to load by saying my image dot load, and then that's all it takes. So round one of getting an image loaded, uh, not too difficult. Now let's just quickly compare this to how you would do this with the AS3 loader. You would set up a uh, URL, you would then create an URL, re URL request or an URL request, why can't I speak? And then you would create your loader and then you would tell your loader to load your URL request and in addition you'd have to add your loader to the stage. So here we have one, two, three, four, five lines of code that are compressed into two. So I really want to make it clear that the image loader is a middleman between you and the AS3 long and verbose code. All right, Basically everything you're doing here you're condensing into these two little lines. So that's all it takes to load a single image. Now let's talk about tracking the progress of this image and also um, having this image maybe fade in or do some sort of animation when it loads because typically that's what you're going to want to do. So let's switch over to my example of loading a single image and tracking its progress. So we're gonna test this movie out and you'll see that my image now fades in when it's loaded but in order to really see the loading progress, we will have to do a view, uh, simulate download, or just hit command return one more time. So now you'll see that as the image is loading, that bar grows. When the bar grows to its full length, the image shows up. Okay. So what I want to do is point out some additions that were made to this file. And up top, we have two new imports. The first thing that we're importing is something called a loader event. And the loader event is used to announce to us all the different loading related events that happen, whether or not my loader fails, when it completes, when it's progressing, tons of stuff. Let's just jump over really quick to the documentation for the loader event, just so you can get an idea of all the different types. Just like when you use a mouse, you have a roll over, roll out, click, all that. Same thing happens when you're loading assets. All these different things can happen relating to the loading of an asset. So I'll give you links for that. And let's just go back to Flash here. And you will see that we're also importing something called a content display from the display package. So a content display object is really just a fancy sprite that has a few additional methods and properties built into it. Okay. The content display is what wraps around your loaded bitmap data or your video that you might be loading or your raw Swift that you're loading. And the content display allows you to add event listeners to your objects before they're fully loaded and to also visually set some properties on them like their scale modes and their positioning. All right, we'll be talking about content display quite a bit as we progress, but for now, all you need to know is that it's a fancy sprite that you can that will wrap around whatever content you load and it's pretty much the way that you will be accessing or targeting your externally loaded content all right so moving on down the line the first thing that we do is that we take my progress bar and we set it to have a width of 0 so inside of my progress bar mc we have a bar mc which is actually that yellow bar that you see and I'm setting its scale x equal to zero. Uh, please feel free to download this FLA, select progress bar, and if you double click on it, you will see inside of there that we have just a few different layers 
of things happening. But this yellow object right here, bar underscore MC. So we're going to be changing its X scale or its horizontal scale uh, to match the progress of my downloaded image. Let's get it the heck out of here and go back to my actions. And I want to show you that we've made some changes to the constructor. And these changes can all go on one line, but to make it easy for us to read in this limited space, I'm just going to very quickly format them on multiple lines and we'll show you what's happening. All right, we're adding an on progress event handler and an on complete event handler. And we're also setting the initial alpha of my image to zero so that as soon as it loads, it's going to be invisible, but my complete handler will tell it to fade in. So in my progress handler, what we're doing is we are constantly updating the scale X property of my yellow bar by setting it to the same value as my image, which is the loader. It has a progress property, which is a value between zero and one. So let's just focus on this right now and you'll see that when the image loads that the scale X of this little bar is changing. So the progress is a value between 0 and 1 and the scale X of that yellow bar is a value between 0 and 1. There's a one-to-one -one relationship. It works out really great. You do not have to do all this bytes loaded divided by bytes total nonsense that you would do with regular AS3 loaders. Um, our on complete handler or our on complete callback, which uses the complete handler, is going to be taking my loaded image and tweening it in. So let's just investigate this event a little bit. So let's just trace it out. Okay. So if I want to know what event made this complete handler run, well, it's going to tell me that the type of event is going to, in fact, be complete. As far as bubbles, cancelable, and event phase go, we're not going to be terribly concerned with those right now. Now, in addition to knowing what event just fired, we can also get the target of that event. And the target is going to tell us what is the loader that fired this event. Okay, In our case, it's going to be the image loader that I created here. Okay, Because I told my image loader to have an on-complete event listener, which would be my complete handler. So let's trace out event.target. And that's going to give me information about the actual loader, telling me the type of loader is an image loader. Loader 0 is loader max's internal reference to that loader. Okay, I could have given it a name property if I didn't like that, but that's for another day. Um, and thirdly, we have the actual asset that was loaded by this loader. So that is the event.target. Now, since we want to be tweening the visual asset to that loaded, we're going to find out what is the content of that loader. All right, so we'll test this out real quick. And there we get our content display container. Okay, remember again, the content display is similar to a sprite. And that's the object that we're going to be targeting 99% of the time when we want to tween a property of the content that was just loaded. Uh, if we want to reposition it, or maybe add an event listener to it. So event.target.content. This is the event that fired. This is the loader that fired that event. And this is the content that was loaded by that loader. All right. So hopefully, folks, this gives you a deeper look into how an image loader works. And once you understand these basic concepts, it's going to be very easy to load multiple images. Because really what we're going to be doing is just creating a whole bunch of image loaders with these similar or shared properties. And we're going to say, hey, load them all. And we're just going to sit back and watch it happen. So stay tuned when I show you how to load multiple images and track their progress. And we're going to be building on all of the different features that Loader Max has to offer. Take it easy.